exactly are familiars. What do they do? How can they help you? How can you meet one? Can your pet be your familiar? We see this all over social media, people claiming that their pet cat is their familiar. But is this technically accurate? We're gonna talk about all of that and more, so make sure you guys keep watching. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, welcome to the family. My name is Dina. I am so happy to have you guys here. Familiars has been fascinating me lately and I've been doing lots of research. And of course, when I start reading and researching a topic, I like to bring a video to you guys to share with you what I have learned. I wanna start off this video with saying that I don't currently have a familiar, but I have been doing my research and I do have intentions to try and seek one of my own. First, we're gonna get into a little bit of a brief history. So familiar are actually a very important part of traditional witchcraft. During the European witch trials, the church actually believed that witches were given familiars by the devil himself. They were believed to be dogs, cats, toads, and other small animals. Sadly, like the people who were executed during these witch trials, many of which who weren't actually witches, might I add, the animals often faced a very similar fate just by being associated with the witch. They later realized that maybe some of these are actually just pets and they're not familiars. But traditionally, familiars are not actually physical animals. They are more of a spirit. Now, I do wanna talk briefly about this idea of people claiming that their pet cat is their familiar or their dog is a familiar or whatever animal they have is a familiar. And we see this a lot. I feel like this is on Instagram all the time. This is on TikTok. It's like, oh, my cat sat on my tarot deck. She must be my familiar. Maybe your cat just sat on your tarot deck. <laughs> Maybe you're close to your pet, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're your familiar. Like I said, traditionally, familiars are otherworldly spirits, so they're not actually something in physical form. That's not to say that your pet can't be your familiar, it's just very unlikely. If your pet specifically chose you, like if you felt like your pet was the one that chose you and you had to take them home, then maybe they are your familiar. Do they help you in your spiritual practice? Do they help you in your spells, your rituals, in some sort of way. Maybe they are your familiar, but that's essentially what familiars do. So if your cat's just hanging out and just, you know, playing with your tarot cards, chances are they're just being a cat. So beliefs and familiars are actually seen all around the world, including in shamanic practices. They see them as a thought form or spiritual entity. It travels astrally and acts as a guardian to protect the shaman from anyone who may try to harm them. So familiars really can be all sorts of different types of spirits. They could be ghosts, they could be angels, they could be demons, they could be fairies. It really just depends on what you need help with and what spirit is drawn to you. Some may actually assume the form of an animal or even a hybrid of an animal. I've seen examples of the familiar looking like one animal but have the head of a completely different animal. The word familiar actually comes from the Latin word familiaris, which actually means servant or intimate acquaintance. So essentially, familiars are here to help us in our practice. They can help you with certain spells or rituals. Let's say there's something that you specifically are having difficulty with. A familiar may be able to help you with that. They can help, they can harm, they could do positive or negative, painful magic as well. Familiars can help you find lost objects. Familiars can help you with divination. They can also act as a guide to the other world, which is what I am particularly most fascinated about. Basically, the other world is the other dimension that is not of this world, so the astral realm. They can maybe help you navigate during astral projection. They could help you with hedge riding, if you are a hedge witch or interested in that practice. Really, the key to finding a familiar that is right for you is getting clear about your intention, getting clear about what it is you're looking for. So what kind of familiar are you looking for? What are the traits, what are the characteristics of this familiar? Are they gonna be your mentor? Are they gonna be your partner? Are they gonna be your servant? What specific workings do you want your familiar to help you with? This is gonna be the key to establishing that relationship. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, make sure you give this video thumbs up. Not only does it let me know that you like this type of content, but it really does help out my channel and I truly do appreciate it. Now on with the rest of the video. A witch or practitioner will often exchange an offering or the help of a familiar, much like working with a deity, except maybe even a closer relationship. So how do you find your familiar? Well, there's actually multiple ways to do this. The first is to summon one. I am actually in one of the perfect places 
to summon a familiar. Not necessarily in a forest, but out in nature. Out in nature is a great place to find your familiar, to really connect, because there's a greater connection that can be found when you're out in the natural world versus if you're just stuck inside. And a lot of the summoning rituals that I have come across, particularly one that stands out to me is in The Crooked Path. I will leave a link to that book down below in the description box. But in this book in particular, this summoning ritual that he explains is actually done outside at midnight under a full moon. So this is the perfect environment, the perfect place to do this ritual. Obviously, if you're gonna do this, please be safe because some places are just not safe alone at night. So if you have a fellow witch or practitioner that you know of, maybe this is something that you guys can do together. I know that when I'm eventually ready to summon my familiar, I'm gonna call on some of my witchy friends. Key thing to understand though is that a familiar may not come the first time. It may take a few times. You may summon a familiar that that's not actually right for you and have to turn them down and look for a new one. This is something that could take time, so make sure you are patient. The second way to meet your familiar is if it is gifted to you by a witch father. Now this is something that is specific to traditional witchcraft. The witch father is the archetypal masculine deity. Essentially, you would receive your familiar after some sort of initiation. There is also a witch mother in traditional witchcraft, which is the archetypal feminine energy. The third way that that you can receive a familiar is through inheritance. So let's say you come from a long line of witches in your family, you may receive a familiar from your mother or your grandmother. This may not be passed down in the traditional sense that you think of where your grandmother may hand you down a necklace or a pair of earrings or something like that where it's more formal. Maybe after their passing, the spirit approaches you and wishes to help you because they are familiar with your lineage. There's various ways this may happen, so be prepared because it may come in ways that you don't expect. And the fourth way that you can find your familiar or meet your familiar is if they just come to you. Sometimes witches will have this experience where a spirit is just drawn to them for whatever reason. So they may find that your energies just click and they're drawn to you and they think that you could be a good pair. Or perhaps there's something that they feel like you need help with. Maybe you've set the intention that you're looking for guidance, you're looking for help with something and they just show up and they're like, well, I can help you. I can guide you through this. I can and offer some assistance. Let me know in the comments below, do you have a familiar of your own or are you looking for one? I'm really curious and I'd love to get a conversation going. So one question I kind of want to leave with is do all witches have a familiar? And I think not everyone has to have a familiar, not everyone may want to have a familiar, but I think the option is probably there if you choose. And you can absolutely practice without one. It's not something that you need. You know, there's a lot of power to be found within yourself, but many people people may find that this connection, this teamwork, or whatever role that the familiar plays in their practice, very helpful. So I hope you guys found this video helpful, informative, maybe it inspired you to find a familiar of your own. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you be a part of our Family Magic Unleashed. I post new content every single week and you wouldn't want to miss out on it. I hope you guys have an amazing day or night whenever you're watching this, and thanks again for watching. Bye-bye guys!